Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this monster microwave stand to go in a galley kitchen. Stick around. The bench is made from Mary and Jarrah, which are Western Australian hardwoods. The top and shelves are made from new Mary, and the base is made from recycled Jarrah roof beams. This Jarrah is very hard on tools. The legs are square, and rather than removing all of the waste using the jointer and thicknesser, I'm going to use the bandsaw as well to remove the bulk of the waste. I'm going to join two sides of the timber so that I have something to run against my resaw fence. I place one jointed side against the bandsaw's resaw fence and then rip it a little oversized. I repeat the process using the other jointed face. I chose to do it this way to reduce the wear and tear on my combination jointer thicknesser. I headed back over to the jointer thicknesser after cutting the legs to their rough dimensions. The bandsaw and edges are then brought down to their final dimension using the thicknesser. I created a jig specifically for cutting the leg joinery. The jig allows me to use a router to route the mortises and a drill for the shelf holes. I'll show you how to make the jig in a future video. The jig ensures that the joinery is cut in the same place on two sides of each leg. I start by using the router to drill a full depth hole at each end of the mortise. Then route out the waste between those holes. The jig is aligned using dowels which can be pushed through the jig to allow the mirror image of the joinery to be cut. I prepared the top and bottom stretches in a similar fashion. I cut them to size once they've been reduced to the right thickness. Remember. Safety first when using the table saw. I place the gripper slightly away from the fence and then push it diagonally towards the fence to keep the stretcher from wandering. I chose to cut the joinery before cleaning up the stretches. In this instance the order does not matter so much, but in other instances the stretches will be cleaned up before the joinery is cut. I use a router jig designed by Michael Fortune for this task. I cut a single mortise in each of the four stretches before resetting the jig for the next mortise. This helps to ensure that I place the mortises in the same place on each stretcher, though this is a little time consuming. It's important to keep the reference surfaces against the fence and the jig to help with consistency. I repeated the process for the two mortises in the narrow stretches. I used a hand plane to remove any milling marks left by the jointer thicknesser and table saw. Notice how the plain timber shines when compared to the unplaned timber. I'm not too worried about having each stretch of the same thickness. In this case, 
near enough is good enough. Your situation may be different, so do what seems best to you. The next step is to cut the slots for the shrinkage buttons in the front and back stretches. I made a jig specifically for doing this. The jig is reversible like the leg joinery jig. You simply knock the dowels through to the other side to reverse it. I forgot to cut the slots in the lower stretches and did them once the glue up was complete. Fortunately, their placement was not critical and I used the jig again for consistency. I prepared for the glue up by setting out my risers and three clamps. Two clamps are used in the glue up, the third acts as a support. I poured glue into each mortise and used a pop stick to spread it around. The floating tenons are then inserted. Clamping pressure is applied once everything is assembled. Check the diagonals to make sure that everything is square. I repeat this for the second frame. I use the same process to glue the two frames together. The top and shelves are made from Mary and are made using the same technique. I jointed one face and both edges. I prepared a spring joint in each joinery surface using a hand plane. I used a glue roller to get a consistent layer of glue on each joinery surface. I used a little bit more glue than normal because I didn't spread glue on both surfaces. I used a damp cloth to wipe away the glue where the overhead clamp would lie. I removed the remaining glue with a paint scraper once it had turned rubbery. The top and shelves were flattened using a belt sander. The pencil lines help to show me when the top or shelf is flat. I know that I've sanded the entire board when all the pencil marks have been removed. Sanding across the grain first, then diagonally to finish the flattening. And finally, with the grain to remove cross grain scratches. After that they went through a drum sander to make the faces parallel and were finished sanded to 240 grit using a random orbit sander. I used a panel sled to cut the top to size. Firstly, square off one edge. Then mark the length of the top and align the mark with the edge of the sled. Finally, cut the top to length. The shelves were done in the same way. The top and shelves were sanded to 240 grit prior to finishing. I wiped a couple of coats of Scandinavian oil onto both sides and the ends. I use a circular motion to help push the oil into the pores. I 
I then wipe it off again to remove the excess. I sand it with 320 grit sandpaper between coats. I wiped on two coats of shellac onto the base to bring out the colour of the jarrah. Then wiped on a couple of coats of Scandinavian oil. As with the top and shelves, I sanded with 320 grit sandpaper between coats. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give us a like below or, or a dislike if you didn't like it. If you have any comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below and please consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell. That way you'll stay up to date with our videos. Thank you for watching.